All right, guys, welcome to Midweek Prayer. Would you guys stand with me? Welcome anybody joining online today. We're super excited you're here. Is there anybody thankful to be in the presence of God? At Wednesday at noon, what a gift this is. I love getting to be in this house. I want to start off just simply reading the psalm that we read uh, this morning, or maybe later today you'll read it. It's in today's Being Transformed Journal, Psalm 65. I'm going to read 1 through 8. And if you have your Bible with you, get it out. We're going to use it a lot today. And we're going to be camped out mostly in the book of Hebrews. So turn over to Hebrews. It's going to be a really, really sweet time in the presence of God. And I want us all to posture our hearts in prayer today from two places. Prayer is not just us talking and working and and giving our requests to God, but it's also us resting in God. Prayer is both work and rest at the same time. We work, but we work from a place of rest. We work from a place of the victory is already won. Jesus is Lord. He reigns victorious. Amen. And so I want to just kick us off with Psalm 65, and then we'll go into worship and just give the Lord our worship, prepare our hearts, let him soften us, and then we'll we'll pray for our church family. So this is what Psalm 65 says. Praise is due to you, O God, in Zion. Who is ready to give God your praise? It is due to him. And to you or, and to you shall vows be performed. O you who answer prayer. Are you thankful the Lord answers prayer? To you all flesh shall come. When deeds of, of uh, iniquity overwhelm us, look at this, you forgive our transgressions. Happy are those whom you choose to bring near. I'm thankful the Lord brought me near today to live in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, your holy temple. By awesome deeds, you're, you answer us with deliverance. O oh God of our salvation, you are the hope of all the ends of the earth, of the farthest of the seas. By your strength, you establish the mountains. You are girded with might. You silence the roaring of the sea, the roaring of the waves, the tumult of the peoples. Those who live at the farthest ends of the bounds are awed by your signs. You make the gateways of the morning and the evenings. We shout for joy. Would you guys lift your hands with me today as we praise our God. Lord, we enter into your your gates with thanksgiving. We enter into this court of worship with praise, Lord. We give you the praise that is due on this Wednesday afternoon. You are worthy of our praise. We rightly give our attention, our focus, our love back to you because you first loved us. You first chose us. You first came near to us. And so, Jesus, we draw near to you. We open the door. We let you in. And we ask that you would come and inhabit the praises of your people today. We love you and we praise you.
get something from you. We have not shown up here to get a feeling from you, but we have come to bring you something, Jesus. We want to bring you a gift today. We want to bring you our heart. You said in your word, Lord, that you don't desire sacrifice, but a broken and contrite heart. So Lord, we break our hearts for what breaks yours. And we tell you that we love you. Would you just tell the Lord in your own words right now that you love him? Give him your voice right now. Give him your heart. If you haven't told him you love him today, tell him that right now with your own voice. You don't need anybody leading you. I can't tell the Lord that I love you for for you. You have to bring that to him. You have to give him that gift. God, we love you. Jesus, where would we be without you? Jesus, thank you for knocking on the door of my heart. I let you in today. Holy Spirit, thank you for anointing me, for covering me with your anointing power. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for providing for us in the ways that you do, the ways we see and the ways we don't see. Thank you. God, we give you our heart in return. We can't pay you back for what you've done for us, but we can give you our heart. So here, Jesus, we give you our heart. We give you what you paid for. We will not withhold what you paid for in full on the cross. We say, search our heart. See if there's any anxious thought or wickedness within me and reveal it, Lord so I can give it back to you. Would you search our hearts, Jesus? unmoved we love you Jesus today in our being transformed journal we read um, in Exodus about um, the garments and the things that were made for the priests the high priests and in Hebrews we get this picture that all of the glamorous the really intense um, thought that was put into the priesthood in the Old Testament was all just a shadow of somebody greater to come, um, our great high priest. And so if you've got your Bible, I want to just meditate on Jesus for a second as our great high priest before we pray into some themes. Uh, we're going to read real quickly in Hebrews 8, 5 through 7. Look at this. This is beautiful. 
It says they offer worship in a sanctuary that is a sketch and a shadow of the heavenly one. For Moses, when he was about to erect the tent, was warned, see that you make everything according to the pattern that was shown to you on the mountain. And we just saw that in our Being Transformed journals. They went into great detail to make the priest's garments um, extravagant and exactly how God had intended them to be. But verse six, look at this. But Jesus has now obtained a more excellent ministry. And to that degree, he is the mediator of a better covenant, which has been enacted through better promises. For if that first covenant had been faultless, there would have been no need to look for a second one. But we know that that first covenant was not better. It was not perfect. It was just a shadow of something so much greater that Jesus was going to bring. So skip over to Hebrews 10 with me. Hebrews 10, starting in verse 11. It says this, And every priest stands day after day at his service, offering again and again the same sacrifice that can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. And since then, he has been waiting until his enemies would be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering, he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. Can we just thank the Lord for that for a second? Let's just meditate on that for a second. Jesus, would you help that revelation to hit our heart that day after day, sacrifice after sacrifice had to be made for the atoning of sin. But Jesus, when you showed up once and for all, sin was dealt with once and for all our sin was removed as far as the east is from the west jesus i thank you that because of that there is no condemnation for those who are in christ jesus we just come against a spirit of shame and condemnation in our church right now and we cancel you in the mighty name of jesus because we are not people who take for granted the one sacrifice that was made on our behalf. Would you just join with me in coming against the spirit of condemnation and shame over our church? Lord, we just lift up anybody in our house, anybody in the family of God, anybody at New Song that has allowed the lies of the enemy to think that they need to live in the old covenant, that they need to day by day offer new sacrifices. When Jesus, you, once and for all offered your perfect body your perfect blood that was the atonement for all sin for all time who are we to think that we can atone for ourselves who are we to think that we can we can give ourselves condemnation for sin that's already been paid for so we just come against the spirit of condemnation in jesus name
chest, Jesus. Thank you that we get to come boldly into your throne room, full of grace, robed in the righteousness of Jesus. We get to make our requests from a position of being next to the Father, sitting next to the Father, because Jesus, you intercede for us on our behalf. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for that, that reality that once and for all, once and for all, your body and your blood did what no other sacrifice made by human hands could do. Jesus, that is a truth, that is a reality that we will be, we will be joining in with heaven's song and praising you for for the rest of our days. If you didn't do a single thing for us, Lord, if you didn't answer one more prayer for us, the rest of our days, we would still have an ocean of reasons to bless your name because of what you did on the cross. We love you, Jesus, for what you did. I pray that that truth would, would be a motivating factor in us every single day, every breath of our life, that the work is finished, that we have been brought near to you, that every time we meet you, we're met by love. Thank you, Jesus. earlier in Hebrews, if you want to skip back a little bit to chapter four, we get a picture of what having this revelation of the finished work of the cross, we get a picture of what that should do in our hearts and our spirit. And that's the fact that we get to live from a place of rest um, because of what Jesus did. It's kind of like how it, it talks about the old covenant. There had to be sacrifices made day by day year by year it was never covered it was almost it was almost like i feel like the lord gave me a picture of like a car note it's like you've paid that car note for the month but you you're not done it's still coming next month it's still coming it's not done yet but what jesus did was he paid it he paid it in full so we are now his completely and there's there's a rest that you get to live from when you have a paid off car how many of you would agree with that right praise the lord for paid off cars right and that's the same thing that we get to live from spiritually every single day, this reality that like the debt has been paid completely. And there's a rest we get to live from. Look at this. Let's see, Hebrews 4. Starting in verse 8, it says, For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not speak later about another day. So then a Sabbath rest still remains for the people of God. Obviously there's a Sabbath day that we can practice, but there is a Sabbath that we get to always live from, the rest of God. Look at this. There still remains for the people of God a Sabbath. Verse 10, for those who enter God's rest also cease from their labors as God did his. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest so that no one may fall through such disobedience as theirs. So I want to just pray for our church that we would learn how to, what it means to strive and to enter God's rest. I love that scripture says the only thing that we should be working for is to rest in God. That's beautiful, right? And so let's pray for our church that we would have this like paradigm shift that we are no longer striving for something Jesus already paid for, but we are striving to enter into what he's already prayed, paid for. And there's like a, a freedom and a joy and like a peace that we get to tap into every single moment of every single day when that truth hits our heart. But so many believers do not live from this revelation. And it says this, I love this. It says that that actually leads to us falling into disobedience because we're trying to do things apart from Christ. We're trying to do things apart from God. So would you join in with me? And let's just pray for uh, our church body to enter into this rest, this eternal 24 seven Sabbath rest. Obviously we still work. We still do things excellently for the Lord. We still do everything under the Lord, but it's from this place of spiritual rest. Amen. Does anybody agree with this good news? So let's pray. Would you guys stand with me? Let's pray for our church. Don't listen to me. Pray, engage, and you pray. If you know somebody that goes here and you just see condemnation on them or you see this spirit of striving, I want you to pray for them by name. Maybe it's a sibling or a, a parent in your life or a family member or 
somebody you serve with at this church, somebody who's just heavy all of the time, that is not, that is not what the Lord has called them to. That's not what he's paid for. And so let's pray for them to enter into this rest. Jesus, I pray that a spirit of revelation would fall on our church, Lord. This, this revelation of the cross and the rest that that opens us up into. God, I pray that none of us would fall into disobedience because of our trying to figure things out, our, try, our trying to work towards you, Jesus. But I ask that you would draw our church into deeper waters of rest that you've paid for. Come on, stir it up, guys. If you think about somebody by name, pray for them. Pray for that person. Maybe that's yourself. Maybe you need to ask the Lord, hey, Lord, I need this revelation today. I've slipped into striving. I've slipped into, into works. I've slipped into this and I need to enter into your rest. but Jesus, in your word, you have also called us to be a royal priesthood, a holy nation. We are called to represent and to point people to our great high priest. We are called to the work as well. And God, I ask that you would give us, everybody in this room, everybody who is already living from that place of rest, the boldness to point out this striving when we see it, Lord. God, I pray that when there's people in our life that we would not cower. We would not uh, shy away from, from speaking the truth and love, calling our brothers and our sisters up to a higher call. 
and in the world in our in our earthly strength and our earthly wisdom it looks like a lower call to rest it looks like a lower call to not work but it's actually a higher call to enter into something that Jesus paid for. And I ask that you would give us in this room the boldness and the anointing to speak that truth in love over the people in our life, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hebrews 4, we're staying in Hebrews, y'all. Hebrews 4.12, look at this. This is immediately following entering God's rest. Some of us don't think that this part of Hebrews is actually in this context, but look at this. What directly follows is, is it talks about the word of God. Verse 12 says, Indeed, the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit, joints from marrow, it is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart and before him no creature is hidden but all are naked and laid bare uh, to his eyes to the one whom we must render an account that passage about god's word we like to just read that out of context and there's nothing wrong with the truth in that the fact that god's word is living and active but that is in context of living from god's rest so i wonder if there's a sense that living in God's rest also is living in God's word. And so I wanna pray for just uh, our church to continue living in the word of God. Many of you guys know that we just passed out new being transformed journals this last weekend. Um, and I just wanna pray that our church would be a church continuing to dwell in God's word, um, to eat from God's word every single day, to persevere in God's word and to not give up in doing good. And uh, maybe you need to pray that, pray that prayer for yourself as well. Um, but guys, let's, let, would you join me in praying for our church's love and hunger and thirst for God's truth, God's word? Because really that's the foundation for, for our rest. Like when we have, when we know the revelation of God's word, it says that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So we have to live in this. So let's pray for our church and the love for the word of God, the rootedness in God's word. So Lord, I just lift up my brothers and sisters in Christ. I thank you, Lord, first off for our leaders, our pastors and their love for the word of God. I thank you that that love is what trickles down to all of us, all of us who, are, who call New Song Church our home. And so God, we praise you. We thank you for blessing us with leaders rooted and grounded in your word and in your truth. And God, because of that vision and that life that they live, we get to be a church that pours that into our congregants. And we get to do things like our Being Transformed journal and produce free content like that for the body of Christ. And so Lord, I just lift up every single heart that took home a Being Transformed journal this weekend. And I pray for a deep, deep hunger to reside in their heart for the Word of God, for rivers of living water that come from your mouth, Jesus. God, I pray that when we get into your word, it wouldn't just be a religious task that we're checking off the box, but that it would be us having the realization that your word is your voice, that this is unlike any other book we could read. And every time we're in it, we're with you. And I pray that every time the word is opened, Lord, that the presence of God would be tangibly felt by all, Lord. Take us into deeper waters of your word, Lord. Give us a hunger for your word.
know, the scripture goes ahead and says when it's talking about the rest of God, that we which have believed do enter into rest. So rest is accomplished whenever we believe, whenever we trust God. And the Lord just put in my heart that there's some people today that you're carrying some heavy things. And uh, he wants, God wants to bring you relief. He wants to bring you, uh, he wants to, in the middle of your circumstances, he wants you to be able to take a big deep breath and go, hey, God's got this. He's working on my finances. He's working on my health. So whatever that is, let's all, let's stand to our feet right now. And I want you to think about what that is, the major thing that you're dealing with right now. And we're going to, we're going to give that to God. We're going to make this an altar for, your, for a few moments. And we're going to cast that care on the Lord because He cares for you. He does not want you bearing that. And when we believe, then that peace and that rest comes to us. So let's pray right now. I'm going to lead us. Everybody say this with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I bring this deal to you. I don't know what to do with it. I can't fix it in my own way of thinking. But I put it at the altar. I give it to you today, Lord. And by faith, I believe you're working. I believe you're taking care of this. Therefore, I take a big deep breath, put a smile on my face, and I rejoice right now. And I thank you that you have this. I don't anymore. I don't anymore. Lord, we give it to you. And we rejoice and we praise you because now it's yours. You're working on it. I thank you for your power working right now, for healing, for working in us. Lord, I give you praise for it in Jesus' mighty name. anything we are the ones that make it hard to trust you you are so easy to trust Jesus you never fail you never change you never forsake us you always come through you already reign in victory you are easy to love you are easy to trust thank you Jesus for giving us an easy yoke 
You give us a work, you give us a load, but it is easy to carry. Thank you for taking our heavy burdens, replacing them with your rest. That's what we want to live from, Jesus. I want to pray just a, just a little bit longer about the love of the Word of God, but as we were praying about that, I just felt led to pray for uh, our next generation, the, the kids in our church, the students in our church, that they at an early age would find a love and a hunger and a revelation of the Word of God, um, and that it would start in our kids' classes. It would start at students in this room. Um, so if you have children, pray for them by name. If you know a student or a kid that's on your heart, pray for them. But if you don't have either of those things, just pray for the ministries in general. But we're going to just pray that as Jesus is elevated, that a hunger for God's word is felt in our kids and our students. So Father, I thank you, Lord, that we are a church that leads with kids. I thank you that that's a vision you gave us at the start of this house. And I thank you that that is being accomplished, but we want to see it again. We want to see more. We're not content to stop right now and to say we're done working. We want to see all of the next generation in this house come to find a deep love and trust and hunger for your word. God, I ask for a clarity of the preaching of the word of God to be released in this house. God, I lift up our children's pastors. I lift up Pastor Joy and Pastor Kent and everybody who speaks in a kid's classroom. I lift up myself and anybody who's going to be speaking in students this year, God. And I ask that there would be a clarity and a boldness proclaimed from the pulpit that would just wake up a deep hunger in our kids and our teenagers and our students for something greater, for real truth. This world is is shouting, what is truth? Where is truth? There is no truth. And we know the truth. It's in your word. There is only one truth. It is your word. And God, I pray that our students and our children would, would find that revelation that all truth is found and, and held in this book. And I pray, Lord, that there would just be a strong urge in their spirit to get into the word. God, that as they do, their life would be built up on the solid rock that they would not just be hearers of this word, but doers of this word, practicers of the way of Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, that we're going to have many testimonies come out of this house that are not your typical testimonies. Testimonies of, oh, I, I fell into drugs, I fell into alcohol, I fell into fornication. We're going to have so many testimonies in New Song of kids saying, I met God at an early age and he kept me all my days. I'm not perfect, but he kept me. I met God because of what I learned in New Song Kids, in New Song Students. We thank you, God, for your keeping power over our next generation. And I lift up the parents in this house, Lord. We are just stewards. It's not our job but we do have a role to play. God, I pray that you would fill all the fathers and the mothers and the caregivers in this house with a burden for their kids' spiritual life, not just their material life, not just their materialistic needs being met and Christmas gifts under the tree, but that we as parents would have a deep conviction about the spiritual well-being of our kids. God, I ask that the word of God would be opened up at dinner tables and near our bedsides, Lord, this year, more than ever before, that our homes would be dictated by rhythms of grace and by your word, that the word of God would be something regularly open and talked about and prayed through with our families. Hebrews 5, we're going to probably close, close with this prayer point. If we have time, we'll keep going. But Hebrews 5, starting in verse 11, this talks about maturing in Christ, growing from glory to glory, getting better. That's something we want to see in our, in our church. 
here's what it says. It says, about this, we have much to say that is hard to explain, since you have become dull in understanding. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the basic elements of the oracles of God. You need milk, not solid food. For everyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is unskilled in the way of righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, for those whose faculties have been trained by practice to distinguish good from evil. As I was praying this morning, I just felt like the Lord highlighted that last verse to me. But solid food is for the mature, for those whose faculties have been trained by practice distinguish good from evil. That There's a level of spiritual maturity where we start to walk in spiritual discernment. We have eyes to see what's really going on beneath the surface, what's good from evil. And um, I just want to pray for our church that our eyes would be open, that our ears would be open, our hearts would be open, that we would be given a spirit of discernment with everything, with the things that we're allowing in our homes, the the music we're allowing into our ears, the things we're allowing get in front of our eyes. Jesus says this in Matthew 6. He says, the eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? And we know that scripture says, above all things, we're, we're in this series talking about our heart and our will and our emotions. Scripture says, above all else, guard your heart, for out of it flows the wellsprings of life. And so we're going to pray for the last five minutes for our church to learn how to guard our hearts, to guard our eyes, our ears, not like in a religious, legalistic way, but like a, a heart that's like, I don't want anything that is lesser than what Jesus has called me to. Um, not out of like, I need to be better than people, but out of a, a, a pure heart. Like, I love Jesus and I just want him to be the only thing I'm letting in my heart. So let's just pray for this maturity to rise in our church and then we'll close. Father, I thank you so much for the growing from glory to glory, the transforming that's taking place in every single heart in this house. We are all on a different spectrum. We're all on a different level in this journey but I thank you that none of us are done. We will all be running this marathon till the day we die. We will be practicing the way of Jesus until we meet you in glory. And God, I ask for a maturity to rise in our church. And you say in your word that maturity looks like us being able to distinguish what is good from what is evil. So God, I ask for spiritual eyes for this house in Jesus' name. Give us eyes to see what's really going on in front of us. Give us ears to hear what's really going on around us. Give, a, give us a heart, Lord, a pure heart that is not just doing things outwardly that looks good, but we are asking the deep questions of what are the motivations behind what I'm doing? Thank you, Jesus for doing this work of transformation and sanctification in our body, in our church family. This is something that we do, not because we worked harder, but because we looked at you more. Jesus says that we, we're supposed to look at you, Jesus, the, the founder and perfecter of our faith. Lord, we set our eyes upon you. Would you just tell the Lord that in your own words? Lord, I set my eyes upon you today this week lord if my eyes have wandered if my gaze has become distracted like peter walking on the on the water if we've been distracted my gaze has been fixated on you but now it's not for for a moment lord we just bring our gaze back to you jesus we look at you and jesus we just declare there is none like you there is none more fascinating than you, none more glorious than you, none more beautiful than you. And so we look to you, the founder and perfecter of our faith, and we ask that you would take us from glory to glory.
pray that our church, Lord, this, this week, we would be known by this world, by people who look like what they preach, who sound like what they preach, who talk how they preach. I pray that the maturity in, in this house would not would not be something that the world says is maturity, but it would be something that Jesus, you look down upon and you say, that's what I want to see in my people. God, would you create in us a pure heart, a mature heart. We don't want to be baby Christians forever, Jesus. We want to be ready for that solid food. We want to be ready to not just watch you do the work, but also partner with you in the work. And so would you mature this house? God, from the kids all the way up to the Christians in this house who have been walking with you for 40 years, mature us, Lord. Take us from glory to glory. so much for walking into this room today and meeting us here, reminding us that you have entered us into a rest that we could never pay for, we could never earn, we could never strive for, but we do get to live from. Teach us what it means to live from that rest today. Would you seal everything that we lifted up to you in faith? We thank you that we serve a God who answers our prayers, who hears everything we prayed. And we leave knowing that, expecting it to happen and to take place in this church body. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen, amen. Awesome. Love you guys. Thank you so much for praying with me today. You are welcome to hang around as long as you want. But if you're ready to go, you are dismissed.